came in our eyes with this, he created a slightly different from what they are. When we talk, we see things are. Welcome to Strange Familiars. If you've seen something strange, a ghost, a cryptid, a UFO, particularly Flannel Man or Bunny Man, anything paranormal or unusual, and you want to share your story on the podcast, you can email us, strangefamiliarspodcast at gmail.com. This weekend, Saturday, July 27th, I will be at the Gettysburg Battlefield Bash. This just came up. I will be with Through the Veil Investigations. I'll be at their table, but I will have my books for sale, and I can sign them, and you can talk to me and tell me stories and meet me there. Again, that's the Gettysburg Battlefield Bash. That's at the Wyndham Hotel in Gettysburg on Saturday. I'm probably only going to be there from maybe 10 or 11 in the morning till about 4 in the afternoon. Last week's book signing at Mount Bethel Cemetery was super fun had a great time, and some pretty neat experiences. Chad from the Strange Day on White Rock's Trail episode showed up. He had some neat things happen. I had some pretty strange things happen. And we're going to talk about it all on the show, but I think we have access to the cemetery again. So I think we're going back one night soon, and we'll tell the stories there and do an on-location recording. On tonight's show, I will be talking with Heather who has a very, very interesting story about a creepy guy that walked out of her dream and into her life. And she's seen him several times since then. At some point, you'll hear from my son Gideon. He steps in and asks a question. That's a first-time thing for the podcast. And Heather puts her husband on as well. And we talk to him about some experiences he is having in their apartment where they're also having poltergeist activity. talking with Heather, who's going to tell us a story about a kind of recurring entity that she sees and then some uh, poltergeist activity in her apartment. Uh, Let's start with this entity. Can you describe him and and tell us the first time you saw him? Yeah, it's strange to say, but he looks a lot like Beck in the 90s. Kind of skinny, tall, sandy blonde hair. Um, He has a goatee and wire rim glasses and sometimes he's wearing a like a pork pie hat and he has a blue plaid button-up shirt and khaki pants and i've seen him about five times i think and three of those times he was also wearing um a jacket kind of like a kind of like a leather duster i don't know why sometimes he's wearing it and sometimes he isn't Um, But the first time I saw him was in 2006, and it was in a dream. And it was just, it was a normal dream up until I went through a door in the dream. And I don't remember what was happening before. I just remember going through the door, and it had a very strange feeling going through it, kind of like pushing through a force field or something. Once on the other side of the door, it became more like like a lucid dream which I'm not prone to having, but it also felt different because in in most dreams you, there's a sort of dream quality to it. There are, you know, time skips or jumps in logic or, you know, you can see yourself, stuff like that. But this just felt like just me in my body experiencing time moving normally and I could feel like my body, I could feel essentially gravity affecting me and I was in a park, and off in the distance was this like log cabin type building, and it was a sunny day, you know, birds singing, all that kind of stuff, and I started walking, and a man came up to me, and it was that man, and he asked me, what am I doing here? And I pointed to the door, and I was like, oh, I just came through that door, 
And he grabbed me by the arm really hard and was kind of shaking my arm and it hurt a lot. And I started to try to pull away from him. He was like, you, you can't be here. You have to leave. You have to go. And I like ripped my arm out of his hand and started running. And he started chasing me. And I could see the door that I had come through off in the field. And it was there was nothing around it. It was just a door in space. And I got to it. And I threw it open. And as I went through it, I woke up in my bed and I could feel, you know, my, my legs burning from having run. I was out of breath. Um, I was terrified. And at the time I was working third shift. So when I woke up, it was daytime and I could see on my arm, like it was already starting to, to purple in like these fingertip bruises around my arm. And I was really shaken up about it. So I went and told my mom, and my whole family is just very stout Catholic skeptics. And my mom was essentially like, well, that's a weird dream. And I was like, it, but it, it wasn't a dream. It, like, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It was, it was real. I was, I was there. I felt it. And she was like, well, dreams are weird. And I was like, I, I feel like I'm like, there's bruises, mom, like on my arm. And she's like, well, you know, you're clumsy. You run into stuff a lot. And I was like, okay, <laughs> you're you're probably right. Yeah. Okay. And so two nights later I was at work and I worked overnight, 10 PM to 6 AM at a gas station. Um, that's on the edge of a forest, like a, a national forest. And there's nothing out there except for a car dealership that closes in the afternoon and an abandoned movie theater. And then everything else is farmland for a couple of miles and so I just, no one ever really came in at night. We got maybe a trucker, maybe the paper guy would come in. I was mostly there to just clean and keep everything stocked. So I really wasn't used to customers. And it was a thunderstorm and it had been going on for a while. And I was standing at the door with the keys in my hand because every time the power goes out, you have to lock the door. Just kept going off and coming back on. So I was like constantly all night locking this door and then unlocking it. So standing there and... It was, it was strange. It was like in a movie. It was like a flash of lightning. And in it, I could see a, a figure walking up the road towards the gas station, which was absolutely just the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Because it's just, like I said, there's, there's nothing out there. You'd have to walk five or six miles just to get to this gas station. For I, I don't know why anyone would walk there. There's nothing on the other side. And so I was looking at the person very alarmed because I thought maybe, you know, their car had died there in trouble or something. And so I'm staring at them and they finally get close enough to kind of be illuminated by the, the gas station lights. And it's the same guy from my dream. And I just panicked. I, I didn't know what to do. And so I, I ran away from the door and I went around behind the counter uh, and I was looking around for, like for a weapon, like if I had to club this guy again, and I didn't have anything. And he came in, and as he came in, the power flickered off again. And like I don't, I don't think I had ever been as scared of anything as I was at that moment. And it flickered back on, and he was right beside me. Who? Oh. Yeah, I, I was too afraid to like do anything. I couldn't scream, or I just you know, like a deer in the headlights and he grabbed me by the arm again in the same spot. Like I could feel like his fingertips like fitting into the bruises that were there. How long after the first dream yeah. was this? It was two days. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the bruises were still there. Yeah. Cause they were, they were very deep purple, almost black. Like they were, they were really bad. They were really swollen. And he got really close to my face and he said, stay away from things you don't understand. And I just stood there like open mouthed and he released me and left. He just walked out the door and went back down the road. And as soon as I was able to move again, I called my mom and it was like four in the morning and you know, she woke up panicked and I was like, mom, that the guy from my dream was just, he was just in my gas station. He, he grabbed me again. 
And she was like, well, call the police if someone like accosted you. And I was like, no, mom, you're not getting the weirdness of this. It's the guy that I had the dream about. It's the same guy. And she was like, why do you think that's weird? You've probably seen him before, got a weird vibe, and subconsciously you had a dream about him. And, and I was like, no, mom, like we lived in this town. It's, it's really, really small. Like our my graduating high school class was like 80 kids, and that's the three counties around us. Like it's a tiny little farming town. I didn't really see anybody that was new to me until I was much older. And so seeing someone my age, because he's he was roughly early 20s and I was 18 at the time, like seeing someone roughly my age that I didn't know was it would it would be something that I would remember. And I, I know I had never seen him before. And, and she's like, well, either way, hang up the phone, call the police. And I was like, OK. So I did. And I called the non-emergency number. And I was like, you know, someone just came into my gas station and they grabbed me. And, you know, if you guys could just kind of come take a statement in case he comes back. And so it took them about uh, an hour and a half, two hours to show up. That's comforting. And by I know, right? <laughs> Especially in a town that small. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you have nothing else to do. <laughs> but, like, I don't know. So they showed up, and by then the, the morning manager had come in, and so we all went in the back and sat down and watched the footage together. And it was there. It was on the, the screen. Like, you know, he came in. They, the parking lot cameras had him walking up. The lights went out. You know, he had come right up to me. They saw him grab me and leave. And like I was, I was comforted by that because there was a, there was a real part of me that was like, oh no, <laughs> am I crazy? Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. I have I have an uncle with schizophrenia, and so I was like, oh no, this is about the time it manifests. Is this happening to me? This that that's worse than ghosts. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. And, but yeah, but he was on the security cam footage. Everybody else saw it. And the police were essentially like, you know, if you see him again, call us. We'll, I guess, keep an eye out. But there's nothing really we can do. There's no identification. And I was like, yeah, okay. And so other than being a weird story, it didn't really come up again. I didn't see him again until 2013, about seven years later. And by then I had moved to, like it used to be, a small little town in northwestern PA. And I moved a couple hours away to a bigger city. And I was going to college and working in a movie theater. I had met my husband and I was married to him by then. And one night they were short staffed and I had to go clean a theater, which wasn't my job in the theater, but I had gone to do it. And you're supposed to wait until everyone has, you know, evacuated the theater before you turn the house lights on. And so I was standing there at the foot of the stairs waiting for this guy to leave. And the credits had rolled and the screen was just dark gray nothing else in the theater like what are you even watching at this point and, and I'm very non-confrontational so I was really hoping he would leave on his own so I stood there watching him for a while and finally I was like I okay so I started walking up the stairs because he was near the back and I was like excuse me sir um I need to clean the movie theater like you know we have another showing coming you'll have to you'll have to leave and he looked at me and watched me coming up but he didn't say anything and I finally got up to him and he looked up into my face and it took me a second because I didn't recognize him at first. It had been, you know, seven years. And after a minute, I realized who I was looking at and I just, I just started screaming and he just vanished into thin air. Whoa. Yeah. So like at this point, what is he? <laughs> Cause he's real enough that he's on security cam footage, but he's also vanishing into thin air. Like, right. what is going on? And I lived, if he was a real person, I lived a couple of hours away from where I had first seen him. What would be the odds? Yeah. Um. So I'm slightly embarrassed to admit I was holding a broom and I tripped over it trying to run away. <laughs> and I fell down the <laughs> stairs a little bit. But I just went hysterically out of this theater and I went and got somebody else. And I was like, you know, this that theater had a slight reputation for being haunted like you know you would get phone calls from other parts of the building that were unoccupied that sort of thing just mild normal rumors that surround i'm sure most movie theaters 
And so nobody thought I was terribly crazy for saying there was this man in there and he vanished and I'm not going back in. You can't make me. And so somebody else went and cleaned it and they didn't see anything in there. And it kind of turned into just one of those stories where people are like, oh, weird. I stopped telling people that, you know, I had seen him before and, you know, the stream, like, because nobody ever believed it. You know, people, you could always see them, like, interested in your ghost story when you first start. And once you get to the third encounter, they're like, okay, now, you know, you're just messing with me now. Right. And so, I, you know, you feel crazy. And so I kind of just, I would use, like, that that instance itself, whenever someone would say, like, have you ever seen a ghost? I would just be like, oh, yeah, this guy in a movie theater and he vanished. But, you know, the truth was a lot weirder, but no one ever believed me. So I just stopped really talking about it at that point. And a couple years later, in 2016, um, I had moved jobs and I was working late at night again. And I left the building that I was working at and got in my car. And I put my hand on the, the shifter and I felt someone grab my hand and I looked up and he was in the passenger seat of my car. No. Just, yeah. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I was so scared. <laughs> I'm getting, you know, chills just thinking about it. It was, that's, that's like one of those horror movie tropes. Like, you know, you don't want someone to be in your backseat or like right. pop up while you're driving. Like, right. Yeah. And he just looked at me and he said, where have you been? And I just started screaming, like, you know, like I just lost it completely and started screaming. And <clears throat> I jumped out of the car, like I popped the door open and he vanished again. Like, you know, the passenger side door didn't open. He just vanished again. He looked slightly annoyed <laughs> um, before he vanished. And I called my husband and I was like, there's someone in the, the passenger seat of my car. Like, and my, you know, my husband's like, oh, my God. And I was like, no, he vanished. It's a, it's a ghost. I think it's the, I, I just, <laughs> he was like, okay, calm down. Like, but like what I wanted to do, like I wanted him to like come get me cause I was afraid, but my husband is, he has a degenerative uh, eye disorder. So he's, he's legally blind. So he can't come get me. <laughs> um, so I, he's like, I just, you know, leave the phone on, you know, drive home. And I didn't see him again. And, you know, my husband came out and walked me upstairs. And um, my husband never really believed in anything paranormal or ghostly. And I have just hundreds of stories, you know, from being very, very young. Because stuff just, it's like I'm a lightning rod and stuff just won't stop happening to me. But my husband had a very... uh I believe that you believe something happened <laughs> kind of attitude towards it. Right. You know, like I believe you that you've seen something, but also like I don't, I've never seen anything. So I can't really say what could have possibly been going on. So I didn't want to connect all of those experiences together and be like, you know, there's this person that's been <laughs> haunting me since 2006. Like that's, it's a vulnerable thing to tell people when they're not going to believe you and, you know, you're going to feel crazy. Sure. Um, and so it wasn't until recently that I was like, okay, so, you know, all these individual stories I've told you, like, they're all the same person. <laughs> and he's wow. like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't want you to think I was nuts. <laughs> Yeah, well, um, I mean, I'm trying to put it delicately, but I mean, if you have schizophrenia in your family, you are conscious of how you sound. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I have a mental illness, but it's a it's a personality disorder that ha doesn't have any hallucinatory component to it. So there's a, and I've been, you know, seeing psychiatrists and psychologists and, you know, therapists and stuff since I was, you know, early in my teens. So I've told them all of these things like, I know from medical professionals that I don't have schizophrenia, but, you know, there's always those people that are going to be like, well, you know, you right. do have a mental illness. It does run in your family. Are you sure you're seeing people who really, like, can tell you whether you're sick or not? Right. And, you know, like, it's very insulting, but it also, like, it hurts you a lot. And so you don't want to risk that, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, oh, and yeah. so you keep it to yourself. <laughs> 
is there any discernible pattern to to when he shows up? Is, are you under stress? Are you? Is it around times of moving or changing jobs or anything like that? Um, I haven't noticed anything in particular. Like the first time I saw him, I had been working there for a while. Um, I wasn't terribly stressed out. I had a lot of very severe stress and upset and family problems in like 2011, but I didn't see him until another two years from then. So he doesn't seem to show up when I'm stressed out. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't even seem to be a certain time. Like when I saw him when I was at the movie theater, it was mid to late afternoon. He's shown up at the middle of the night. The last time I, I saw him, then I'll, I'll get to in a minute, but that was during the day, like full daylight outside. Wonderful. So, so, he, can, so he could be there anytime. Yeah. There's, there's no you way can, to be you there. You can't predict it. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was hoping it would be something like, you know, stress induced or there would be, I don't know, a storm going on or a smell that comes with it. Like, right. Yeah. But nothing. It's just completely random. But the last time I saw him was probably the the weirdest, probably not the most frightening, but definitely the hardest to explain. I was sleeping, and I woke up, and it was while I was working a third shift job, so it was two or three in the afternoon in broad daylight in my room, and I wear a, a sleep mask, and I it was one of those things where you know you wake up and you realize that something has woken you up, but you don't remember what it was at this point. Mm -hmm. And so I, I got up and I pulled my sleep mask off and it's bright daylight. And I looked out my door and just everything in my house was frozen. Like in movies where they stop time, like, you know, my fan was mid oscillation. My cat was like jumping off the couch and he was like mid leap. I didn't hear any noises. And I was like, what is going on? Like, I have got to be still asleep. Like, this has got to be a dream. And I started hearing this very strange music. And it was kind of like a slow, distorted uh, tiptoe through the tulips, if you've ever heard that. Mm -hmm. um, which is already kind of a creepy song. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I don't know if it was that exactly or if it just sort of gave me the impression of being like that. I don't recall it exactly. And that guy walked around the corner of my door and sat on the end of my bed. And I just, I tried to move away from him, but I couldn't, I couldn't move terribly much. Like I could move my whole body, but I couldn't move more than like a couple of inches one way or the other. Like it was sort of like I was in a, like a, a box that I couldn't get out of. And he said, okay, well, we're going to do it this way because you won't stop screaming whenever I try to talk to you. And I was so afraid that the only thing that that meant to me was if I stop, if I start screaming, he'll leave. And so I started screaming and he started yelling at me and he just starts, he started yelling, stop, stop it. Stop screaming. Stop. And I, I, I wouldn't stop because he hadn't left yet. And eventually he stood up really, really angry and like slammed out of my room. And after a minute, like everything started moving again and I stopped screaming and the music had stopped and everything was moving. And like, I just, I, my, it turned into crying and I woke my husband up and I was like, I just had this really bad dream you know, I dreamed that this guy that this guy came in, whatever, and sat on my bed, and you know, he's like, "Well, you had a nightmare. Try to calm down and go back to bed." And and I, I I couldn't. I was I was just too upset, and it stayed with me for a couple of days, and I just didn't know how to. I didn't I didn't know what I had seen. I don't know what had really happened there, and that was in 2017, and I haven't I haven't seen him since then. I'm really hoping I just made him angry enough that he stops trying to talk to me. Yeah. I'm sure that there is a lot of people that it, when they hear that, they'll be like, well, why don't you ask him what he wanted? And it's so scary. It's kind of like when people say meeting, meeting aliens when they get abducted, it's like, it's like your body knows it's in the presence of a super predator. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's, it's sort of like that. Like I don't, 
I don't know if I could calm myself down enough to have a genuine conversation with this entity, person, ghost, I don't know what, right. long enough to re- find out what he wants. Like, I don't know if my body will not betray me. You know, I, I really don't know if I even could. No, I completely understand that. I, it's much easier said than done. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Why didn't you yeah. take a picture? You... Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do oh. that? It's so much oh my easier God. said than done. <laughs> This is the worst thing. Like, why didn't you take a picture? Like, oh, yeah, in that five-second inter- interaction before he vanished out of the movie theater in, in which I didn't have a phone or a camera on me, you're right. I should have taken a picture. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm in shock, and I'm going to reach in my pocket and pull out my phone and then get the get the camera ready. And, yeah, it's just, you know, it's so much easier said than done. Yeah, or, like, the time he was in my car, like, excuse me, strange man in my car, do you mind if I get my phone out real quick and take a picture? I'm sure you won't hurt me in the time it takes to do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you've already (laughs) assaulted me, but maybe maybe don't this time until I get a photo. If you could, sir, if you could calm down, please. I need to record this because people on the Internet may not believe me. (laughs) That's number one. (laughs) Uh, That last time, do you remember, like waking up then or do you did you just were you just there in like so everything he leaves everything starts moving again did you then wake up from a dream or were you you, were you essentially awake at that moment is that question clear oh yeah i thought you meant it at um at first before he came in but no after he left it after everything started moving i didn't i didn't wake up any further like i just remained i was sitting upright you know while i was talking while not talking to him while i was screaming at him I was upright and sitting in my bed and um, I just turned straight to my husband and woke him up. Mm -hmm. Um, There was no coming to or anything like that. And I didn't feel like I had been sleeping at that point. Like I didn't have any residual tiredness or anything like that. I know that a couple of times when I've tried to tell people that story, they usually say I had sleep paralysis, Mm -hmm. but I've had sleep paralysis and it, it definitely wasn't that. Plus, I was sitting up and moving. And that's... Right, yeah. I mean, the word paralysis is literally in sleep paralysis, and I wasn't paralyzed. Yeah. So I, I know it wasn't that. Yeah, I don't know of any... I mean, I'm sure someone will correct me, but I am personally not aware of any instances <laughs> where people are sitting up or are able to sit up, rather, you know, during sleep yeah, paralysis. Yeah, and moving around. Yeah. Wow, that yeah. is so weird. And, you know, I was thinking if he would give you yeah. the courtesy of ringing a bell or something before he shows up. <laughs> Maybe he could text me that he's here and then I can prepare. <laughs> yeah, then then you might be able to like, OK, I can gather myself and, and maybe maybe gather myself enough to ask this guy what the heck he wants. But if he's just yeah. going to appear randomly, there's no no way. I don't like this guy. I'm going to just go on record and say I'm not a big fan of this fella. Um, yeah, I'm not I'm not cool with it. <laughs> and when I when I found your podcast, um it was I'm sure a lot of people have found it through last podcast. Mm-hmm. Um but they mentioned, you know, you know, strange familiars with flannel man and I was like, "Oh my god. Oh my god." Cuz like my guy wears a a plaid shirt. It's not flannel, but it's plaid. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh my god, have other people seen him?" But it's definitely not the same thing. <laughs> I was very upset. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's I wouldn't have been surprised if you're like, yeah, you know, if you had told me and, and then we're like, yeah, and he was wearing flannel, I'd have been like, oh, yep, there you go. But uh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, but he walks in the same footprints, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's... This guy definitely looks like like a early aughts dirt ball. <laughs> he has <laughs> kind of like a rat mustache. Like I, I, I even wish like maybe it was like a, a scarier like looking entity so maybe people would be like wow that's really scary like you take it seriously but he really just looks like if beck grew a really nasty mustache and got like really terrible glasses like i don't i don't know why i'm being haunted by something like that like that's so weird that is odd Uh, i want to know what he's about but it's easy from again for me from here to say well next time you see him yeah. yeah. Ask him a couple of questions. I'll just type up a list, keep it by the bed. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. The host of Strange Familiars would like you to answer this question there. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Are you a ghost or a real person? Because if you're a real person, do you like podcasts? <laughs> <laughs> Inquiring minds want to know what you're all about. <laughs> Even if you're not real, I'll take those lessons from ghosts. If ghosts want to, want to, yeah, wanna, honestly, 
Yeah, they want to add to my numbers. But uh, <laughs> but this isn't the first person that's made the leap from dream to reality like this, where someone saw some someone like this in a dream and then, you know, later saw them in real life. It was a flannel man they saw with one eye, and I believe it was in one of the Carolinas they were in, but they saw him multiple times. Again, it was a small town. They knew everybody in the town, and this guy was not of the town, and they kept seeing him. Very, very similar. Reminds me of your story. It doesn't in that much. Like it was again, it was a small town. They said we knew everybody. You know, like everyone hung out at this one bookshop. We knew everybody in town, and then one day, like you know, this guy's there. The same guy that I had dreamed about. Yeah, like and and a lot of people will always want to say like, well, I'm sure you you saw him at some point and you don't remember, but those people haven't grown up in a town where. You know, everybody in town, you're like, oh, I can tell they're part of that family because, you know, they have the same coloring as they all do. Like, it's Mm -hmm. that kind of, like, tiny town where you know what, you know, everybody did in high school and you know everybody within, like, 15 years of you because everyone remembers what they did. And so seeing someone you don't recognize in a town like that, you remember those people because it's not the same tired faces you always see. Right. Well, this guy is super creepy. How long do you remember about how long the bruises on your arms were there for after he grabbed you? I usually have bruises a little longer. I have very pale skin, so you can see them even after they've faded mostly. I think it was a couple of weeks, maybe, maybe two weeks, um, until they were gone completely. They hurt for almost the entire two weeks. Wow. Yeah. And... Have you ever had a dream where you've come away with you know marks on your body like that before? No, since? nope. That's the only time it's ever happened to me. Yeah. See, I mean, the only explanation is if you were squeezing your own arm, you know, maybe in the yeah. dream, but it wouldn't be the right direction. The, and I, know. I tried that too, and I have relatively small hands, and I couldn't wrap my hand around my arm like to get all of the. Um, mm-hmm. like bruises to line up and because my, my mom had said you know you're really clumsy you run into things and I was like look at them that's a hand right that's a hand ma and she was like well I mean maybe you know you did it to yourself and, and that's when I was like trying to like fit my fingers into it and she was like well I don't know that's kind of weird <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, yeah okay oh <laughs> uh, whatever you know some things you just can't explain yeah. um and that's how my mom is I mean, everything that happens she's like huh weird yeah (laughs) that's as much as you'll get out of her (laughs) was there anything unnatural about the quickness from the time when he came through the door the power goes out and the the, and then he shows up beside you was there was it anything unnatural about that or could someone have have made that distance in that time i don't think someone could because it, it really was it was a flicker it didn't go out for more than maybe a couple of seconds and he crossed probably 20 feet in maybe two seconds and was that on the tape then yeah and i i'm i was really hoping they weren't going to comment on that because i was afraid of being like well i did have a weird dream about him let me tell you my theories (laughs) Mm -hmm. but my they were like wow he's quick and that's that's about as much notice as they really took of it i think there was also probably a little they might have thought that the camera cut out for a little longer because it just goes black. Right. Um, right. They, they didn't have like night vision cameras or anything. Mm-hmm. So I think they might have thought that it, it had cut out for a little while. It doesn't give a good representation of how quickly the lights came back on. So I don't think they really noticed that part of it. Wow. That must have been creepy. Yeah. It was like he wormholed like right up into my face. Oof. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah, I was. <laughs> when he touched you, did you notice anything unnatural about the way he felt or anything? He just felt like a real living person when he grabbed you. Yeah, he just felt like some guy. You know, there was nothing strange about. And there's nothing really strange about the way he looks either because I've tried to recall, like, did he have, like, unnaturally large eyes? Was he Is he, like, too tall? Or anything like that, but no. As far as I can tell, like the way he feels, and like when he grabbed my my hand when I was in the car, it just felt like somebody holding my hand. You know, his his skin has like um, a normal amount of like clamminess to it, and he feels as warm as a person would feel. 
Mm-hmm. You know, he doesn't feel like unnaturally cold or anything like that. I'm trying to think of the best way to phrase this. Do you think you wandered into his world, for lack of a better term, and kind of by running back through the door, you kind of showed him the way in, into your world or into our world, our reality or our dimension or something? I'm glad you said that because that's kind of how I feel. But I mean, that's like top tier crazy. You know? like, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's things. completely speculative, but you know. Yeah. It's... But that's what it feels like. And a lot of the things that he's he's said to me over the years kind of back that up with like, um, like stay away from things you don't understand or like you need to leave and stuff like that. And he seems like he wants to to talk to me about something. And I feel like that's that's the only thing that makes sense is that it's I, I don't know, it, like not like I re- released him into this world or something like that. But I definitely feel like I I stumbled on something I wasn't supposed to see. And these are like some aftershocks from it or, or something like that. Right. we'll get back to our interview with Heather in just a moment. I want to thank our patrons. Strange Familiars is brought to you by our patrons. Without our patrons, we could not make Strange Familiars. I know things are slow in the summer, people are going on vacations and so forth, but if you enjoy the content we bring to you every week on Strange Familiars, the way you can help us and get more content, too, is to become a patron at Patreon. That's patreon.com slash strangefamiliars. Just $3 a month gets you extra shows. We do at least one extra show for our patrons every month. Often we do more than that. There are other levels of support there as well. If you want items like t-shirts, pins, stickers, copies of my books or CDs, go ahead and check it all out at Patreon. Patreon.com slash strangefamiliars. Another way you can help if you don't like a monthly subscription, check out our show notes at strangefamiliars.com and look for the paypal.me link. You can make a one-time donation that way. And please remember to like and subscribe wherever you're listening to Strange Familiars, whatever podcatcher or on YouTube. Make sure to give us nice five-star ratings and share the podcast with your friends on social media. My next question was going to be, and I, I know you probably don't have a, a solid answer for this. Who would? But you know what you think he is. Do you think he's just, you know, a person from another dimension, or do you think it's some kind of spiritual thing, or, or do you have any guess, really? I don't know. I I've taken to calling him an entity because I feel like that's vague enough. Mm-hmm. But I I believe that there's definitely a possibility of alternate dimensions or you know different timelines. Um, I feel like we don't 100% understand the physical space around us being, you know, 3D creatures and being limited. So I feel like there are a lot of possibilities that I I just don't have the the education or the creativity to truly understand. Right. And I feel like if he was going to fall into something, it would it would definitely be something like that. That's that's generally beyond my comprehension. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, so when you call him a ghost, it's because he's kind of vanishing at will, not because you think he's someone who passed on from this dimension or whatever. Yeah. I definitely don't think he's, he's a a traditional ghost because I've, I've seen a lot of apparitions in my life, a lot of what you would traditionally think of as ghosts. And there's just, it's hard to describe. There's just something definitively different about his, his bearing. Mm Mm-hmm. So I, I call him a ghost to most people because that's the easiest way to put it into terms. Right, yeah. But I, I yeah. don't think that really fits. Yeah. My son has a question he wants to ask. He's, he usually doesn't care that much, so he wants to ask you a question. <laughs> okay. By, like, most stretches, my dad could probably refer to me as a skeptic, has before, still will. Not super interested in the cryptid sort of thing. I find most of it goofy, but something about your story kind of struck a chord with me. <laughs> well, thank you. Do you find it interesting that this thing, like, 
very obviously has like a tenuous at best relationship with like the corporeal realm and you first experienced it whatever it is in a dream but like you wake up with like these marks on your arm yet this thing's also able to vanish like in and out of whatever space you're in yeah and it's it's strange i describe it as vanishing but it it definitely looks more like and this is going to sound weird, but in, in a lot of, like, sci-fi movies, you'll see someone kind of phase out. Like, they get yeah, a little yeah, yeah, static yeah. first. It looks like that when he vanishes. It's almost like he's slipping through something. I guess to, like, phrase that better, since I guess it wasn't super clear. Do you think the fact that, like, you woke up with marks on your arm or whatever, and I think my dad kind of touched on this earlier, do you think we're, like, it phasing out or whatever would be like it going back to whatever realm it's in be it you know just dreams or whatever do you think like it grabbing your arm or whatever and like you having that effect in like you know the corporeal realm do you think that's kind of like the inverse of that if you want to look at it that way i would say as as much as i i can even think about it in terms like that i'd say yeah it I don't know. It's, it's hard to say. I feel like there is definitely some sort of corporeal aspect to him, but also sort of an ethereal aspect to him. I, that I, is what I found interesting, the fact that like the thing was very obviously both. Yeah. like It, it definitely seems to move around through this particular space and dimension however it wants to. And it seems to show up where it wants to and leave when it means to. And in the last one where everything was frozen, I don't know. I don't know what that could be. Is that a pocket of time? Is that <laughs> being partially in its dimension? Like, why couldn't I move? Like, I, it, it seems to be like when I described it as my body recognizing like a, a super predator, I feel like it's more like my subconscious recognizing something it can't really grasp. Gotcha. Which would yeah. definitely be something that can, you know, s- switch states of being. So, yeah. <laughs> thank you, Gideon. Gideon jumping in to add some questions there. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, what movie was it, by the way? Do you remember? In the movie theater? Oh, no. Um, oh, God. What was that one with Ben Affleck, I think? And he was, uh, he was a pretending to be a movie director but he was getting some refugees out of a south american country was that it i I, argo was that argo maybe maybe if that was if that was in 2013 or 14 (laughs) that's what i worked there from (laughs) that's what it was (laughs) um i think it might have been it might have been that just trying to get a get a you know feel for this guy's taste in film (laughs) <laughs> I don't know if he even stuck around to watch the whole thing or if he was just really enjoying that blank screen. You never know. Right, yeah, exactly. He could have just popped up. Oh, she's coming in here alone. Why, well, I think I'll pop up and uh, be here and be creepy or whatever. <laughs> or maybe he's actually a lot worse at this than we're giving him credit for. Like, maybe he was hanging around the restaurant that I worked in. He heard over the, the walkie-talkie that I had to go clean that theater. He's like, okay, well, she's not noticing me here. So I'm going <laughs> to run to that theater real quick and get yeah, set up. <laughs> we, we do tend to, like, assume a sort of omnipotence to these characters. Maybe they're not that great. <laughs> yeah, who knows if he was sitting in my car, like, waiting an hour for me to come out of work, and he's yeah, like, dang, ch- she's usually done by now. <laughs> checking his interdimensional watch. Come on, lady. <laughs> Jesus! And then she just screams at me. I can't even get a word in. <laughs> I'm gonna wait a couple of years and see if she chills out. <laughs> wow. Well, there's enough weirdness associated with it that I feel like at least at least the last when when you woke up and things were frozen, that feels like these you know out of body things that feel real. The, the you know the, the similar things that happen in my case with with my abduction experiences and so forth i at this point i the only way i could wrap my head around them is like okay it was some kind of out of body experience that felt incredibly real yeah. just because of the weirdness involved to me it's like like that's the only way i can explain it otherwise you know if he has the power to stop time that's crazy right that's that's I mean, right that can't be real <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it, well it's just that he's so powerful then you know what i mean it's one thing to like okay i'll meet you out of body in this shared space or something like that 
of course, that does nothing to explain, you know, I don't think you're stepping out of body in a movie theater or in your car, you know. Um, and I definitely, like, you know, nothing anomalous happened on the security cam footage, you know. Right. I didn't appear to do anything weird. So, like, there's just there's just so many different weird things right about this one weird looking guy <laughs> oh how i wish you had that camera footage i know right okay. and people have asked me that um a couple of times over the years and i'm like yeah my manager at the gas station in 2006 probably like isn't like yes absolutely yeah yeah <laughs> well, that's the, most a, of those tapes of- back then people were using tapes and they just record over the same tape you know just... Yeah, we had a, I think it was a 24-hour window, and mm-hmm. if it was past that, it, it recorded over it. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, too bad. I'd love to see it. Right? Yeah, once again, I'm going to weigh in and say, not a fan of this guy. Hope you don't have to deal with him again, you know. Uh, I hope that's the end of it. Maybe, maybe he's gotten enough. Okay, she's going to scream every time I see her. I give up. Maybe he's off bothering somebody else and I won't have to deal with it anymore. Right. I'm hoping that like, cause we have, we have a poltergeist right now and I'm, I'm kind of just hoping that whatever the poltergeist is, is just kind of keeping everything else creepy out of my apartment. <laughs> sort of like a, like a ghost territorial stance. <laughs> <laughs> no room at the inn. Yeah. They're like, Oh, something's already here bothering her. So maybe I'll come back later. That's, that's what I'm hoping for right now. Yeah. Yeah, well, let's talk about this poltergeist. What's going on? Okay, so I think it's been going on longer than we've been 100% aware of it. So I think with the nature of it, is it, it mostly just sort of moves things or hides things from us. And so I think that there's a lot of, you know, oh, we're being absent-minded and it takes a little bit to really grok that something weird is happening right and yeah, the, the first the, thing I- the first couple of times things move or go missing or something weird you know turns on it on its own you go oh that's weird but uh yeah when it starts repeating yeah. or, or happening a bunch then you go okay something else is going on here and the, the first thing that really happened that kind of clued me into like oh something very strange is happening is it was late at night and I hadn't gone to bed yet. Like, I hadn't fallen asleep yet. But I had been, you know, laying in bed using my phone and stuff. And all the lights in the house were off. And I got up to go to the bathroom before I turned the light out in my room. And I walked through my dark apartment. And my bathroom is off of our kitchen. And they're, it's a very, very small apartment. So I walk into the bathroom, go to the bathroom, and come back out and two of the burners on the stove were on. We have a gas stove, so it's like flame. And So again, you'd already it's, walk it's, by it. You'd already walk by it yeah. and they were off. Yeah. Okay. And so. it was pitch black, so you would notice like the only light source in the house Right. you walked past it. And I was like, oh, that's weird. Huh. And, you know, you you try to, you're like, well, maybe I left them, left them on, like, but I hadn't used the stove that day. And I was like, okay, well, I mean, huh, okay. And I came back in and I told my husband, I was like, so I just left the bathroom and two of the, the burners were on on the stove. And he was like, what? That's weird. And I was like, yeah, huh. And we kind of just let it go. And then I lost my debit card a little while later. And I've never done that before, but it's also that happens. And so... Again, didn't think anything terribly weird about it. You know, tore my room apart looking for it, couldn't find it, got a new one, whatever. So about two months later, um, I got my checkbook out to write my rent check, and I had used it a bunch of times since then, and it was just my old debit card was just sitting there in between two checks. And I was like, oh, what? wait, what? That's weird. <laughs> okay. And then it happened again. It it stole my next debit card, the one I had gotten to replace the last one it stole. And this one I found a couple months later, the same way, a couple months later, and it was in my checkbook again. And after the first time, I had, like, emptied my checkbook and, you know, like, thumbed through it. And I was like, okay, it's definitely not in there. And it was stuffed in my checkbook again. And I was like, what is going on? 
Do you normally point, keep like, it there? Started, no, I've never kept it there. Mm-hmm. And in fact, I keep my checkbook in my dresser drawer and only take it out when I have to write a check. <laughs> <laughs> and I keep my, my wallet in my purse in a different room. So there's just there's no reason for it to have been anywhere near it. But again, you're like, well, I don't know. Stuff happens. I'm airheaded sometimes. And then it started ramping up. It went from like some weird stuff to it was a couple times a week. My husband took his glasses off one night, set them on the, the nightstand. We woke up, they're gone. Um, we found them the next day just tangled up in a blanket on the couch that I had been using during that day. Like I had shaken it out and put it over myself. And the next time we picked it up, his glasses fell out of it. And what does your and husband like, say about this? He was like, that's weird. <laughs> and, but he put his glasses on, just kind of went about his business. And, but mostly it was, it was sort of happening to me. Um, like it stole my headphones. I found them in my, the pocket of my bathrobe that I hadn't worn. You know, it had just started getting cold. So I got my bathrobe out and put my hands in there with my headphones that <laughs> disappeared. And I was like, stop it. <laughs> I want this. Stop, stop taking my headphones. And like, it started affecting him. One of the things he does, because he's, like I said, he's disabled. He has a, he's legally blind. So he doesn't work. So he's, he's home all the time. And one of the things he does is he builds like uh, miniatures for like Warhammer and like Dungeons and Dragons mm-hmm. with like a jeweler's loop to, you know, magnify it. And it started taking the, the pieces to them. Like he would set out, because he, he builds them himself. So he would set out like a sprue with like six legs on it and one of them would just be gone and he would find it a couple days later in a box with something completely different that he hadn't opened and he was like, oh, come on. And he, but he just kept, you know, I misplace things, you know, things fall down, things happen. And it just one day I was like, we need to talk about this. Like something is happening and it's, it's weird. And he was like, yeah, yes, yeah, I've noticed some stuff. And so we started comparing notes. And once we sort of really acknowledged it out loud to each other, it, it started getting even worse. Like, you know, you'd walk through a doorway to get something and you'd come back and there'd be a pair of shoes in the doorway that you clearly would have kicked walking through the doorway. Right. And they're just perfectly lined up right in the doorway. None of this particularly bothers me, and I've worked out at this point from yelling at it angrily that if you just forcefully tell it, like, give it back, you'll find it. Within the hour, it will come back, and it'll be somewhere weird, but it will give it back to you if you ask it to. And so, like, each time I started prefacing it with, like, don't think I'm weird, honey, and I would just yell at my house, I'd be like, give it back! (laughs) (laughs) We would find it, and we'd move on with our life. And I had to start like laying down ground rules with it. I was like, okay, you stop taking things out of my wallet, okay? I, you, you don't understand. It really messes me up, okay? And it hasn't stolen my debit card since I asked it to do that. And it stole three or four in a row there for a hot minute. Wow. And it hasn't done it again in like a year. I, I, I was like, you need to stop like messing with our electronics. Like that's, you know, they break. We can't afford to replace them. We're very poor. Please don't do this. Right. And so it mostly... It, keep, it keeps attacking his miniatures, and I think he needs to have a word with it, but I think he feels too silly to have a word with it. <laughs> but the the one thing that, that finally, finally, finally convinced him, like, there is definitely 100% something paranormal happening here, and I can't let it go any longer, is a very quick but strange story involving ectoplasm. And he's standing right beside me, and I made him promise that he would tell this story because it's his. So just one second. All right. Hi. Hello. (laughs) So one day we were sitting in front of the television watching TV, and the television remote control was on an end table between the two of us. And at one point, the volume was up a little loud, and I asked her to hand me the controller, and it was in front of me on a pile of papers. And neither one of us thought much of it. Maybe one of us just moved it there and didn't think about it or whatever. But I went to pick it up, and it felt like it was covered in strawberry jelly. And not just a little bit, not like it had, you know, slipped or touched a little tiny bit of it, like 
to the point where my fingers were squelching into it. Wow. And it was just covered. It wasn't just a little bit that I would mistake or anything like that. So I... I kind of exclaimed to Heather. I was like, what in the world is this? And I got up to go into the kitchen to wipe it off. And when I got to the sink, I started to move the uh, the controller to, I shifted it in the other hand to start wiping it off. And it was completely clean. And there was nothing on it. And I was looking at my hand and there was nothing on that. And I just kind of stared at it for a while because this didn't make any sense. And I you know, wiped my shirt. There was nothing on my shirt. I walked back into the living room and I told Heather what happened. And I sat back down, and the papers were clear. There was nothing sticky on those. And, like, it was just gone. And I reiterate, it wasn't just a little bit. It was, like, it felt like at least two tablespoons worth of jam on the thing. It was just everywhere. And then it was just gone. And that was the first time. I mean, it's one thing to see the results of it. It's another thing to literally physically interact with it. And that was kind of my waking up point where I was like, okay, this... I just I, I just stared it in the face. I can't really deny it anymore. There's no reasonable explanation for why my remote control was suddenly and then suddenly not covered with jelly. Right. What's your name? I didn't catch your name. Joel. Joel. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So coming at this is from a more skeptical angle. Okay. At what point do you say, like, I have to admit something really weird is going on here? It for me, it's it's personal interaction with i'm not opposed to the idea of the metaphysical world i've just never seen any strong evidence of it so i I, i'm not i'm more of an agnostic when it comes to that i totally believe that it could be real but i haven't seen anything to -hmm. suggest it Mm -hmm. but i'd be willing to to accept it if i see it and that was the first time i really really saw it so that the the, that like the ectoplasm is an incident we'll call it basically yeah, that was it. That was the when the light switched for me. Wow. Yeah, I can imagine. That is bizarre. Yeah. And it, I mean, it doesn't seem like that big of a thing. My my remote control was sticky. If you follow what that means all the way down the line, it kind of leads to a really weird place that you really didn't think about or haven't really connected with before. Yeah. That's a bizarre one. Yeah. Yeah, it was real bizarre. Well, thanks for telling the story, Joel. Sure thing. Here's Heather again. Hi. Hey, that was amazing and weird. I know. And <laughs> wow. So, so do you feel vindicated at some point with like, like, <laughs> like, yay, I've convinced my husband. <laughs> yeah, there was this, uh, I had this really obnoxious look on my face when he sat down because he was just, I could see it in his face. Like, you know, he was like, he had just seen like 10,000 universes. He was like, oh my God. And I was like, you know what that was, don't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, don't. I just need a minute. And I was like, you know what's on that. You know what you just felt. And he was like, just give me a minute. And I was like, that's ectoplasm, son. What? <laughs> he was like, please don't do this. <laughs> Got the one eyebrow raised. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who's not crazy? I'm not crazy. <laughs> and since oh, wow. then, like, that's, it's just kind of... That's yeah. amazing, though. I know. It's, uh, it's become kind of this thing now where we're like, oh, yeah, you know. The poltergeist did this and the poltergeist did that. And we've never actually seen anything move itself. It's almost like it, you know, teleports. It's almost like it wormholes to something else, mm-hmm. somewhere else. Because we've never seen, like, you know, the remote floating across the room. And and if it was just my husband experiencing it, I'd be like, well, maybe he just hasn't seen it yet because of his vision. But, like, my vision's fine. And I've I've seen the after effects of it. I've seen things show up where they shouldn't be. But I've never seen something actually moving through my house yeah that's common with so those nice stuff though the is uh, it yeah the the uh, ports that's fairly common where people don't see it go it goes you know sometimes they'll come back and sometimes they don't and i was a little worried at first because i i had a poltergeist at uh one of the buildings i used to clean back when i i cleaned offices and it was right before all this started but it was a poltergeist that like it would move my cleaning products around but it would mostly like it would knock on the walls Mm-hmm. to like talk to me and I could ask it questions and it would I used to have a video on my old phone of me like asking it questions like one knock for yes two knocks for no and <clears throat> I would show people that video was kind of like a hey cool look it's fun and when I quit that job I was kind of sad to leave my my poltergeist friend and I was like hey if you want to follow me like I live you know on such and such a street I don't know if 
if ghosts really understand the, the concept of directions, but if you want, you can just come with me and follow me home. I'm on my way there. And so, like, once I was like, I think we have a poltergeist. I was like, oh, God. Oh, no. Did I do this? <laughs> but I, I asked it. I was like, if you're the same one, can you, like, knock on something to talk to me? But it didn't knock on anything. So I don't think it's the same right. the same thing. Right. Well, I mean, it could be some, you know, kind of psychokinesis thing that you're doing subconsciously or or you and your husband are doing together without realizing it you know i mean there's poltergeist activity is really interesting because it can be it doesn't always have to be a ghost you know what i mean it can be mm-hmm. the, the, just very very weird things that are happening although it does seem to have often not, not always but often it does seem to have this other aspect to it uh, like almost an intelligence behind it which is really really fascinating yeah, because, like, it, you know, when I keep asking it, like, don't touch these things, don't do this, like, it'll stop doing whatever I'm I'm asking it to do, but it'll start kicking up a fuss in a different way. Mm-hmm. But I've also, every now and then when I, I'll lay down and go to sleep, like, I'll turn the light off and I'll lay down, and it'll start, like, I, at least I, I think it's the, the same entity, <laughs> it'll start shaking the corner of my bed really hard, like it's trying to wake me back up. Like, the first time it happened, I was like, oh, no, oh, God, what is that? But then I was like, oh, it's it's probably that, that you know, thing that's moving all the stuff around. And so I was like, stop it. And when I say stop it, it'll stop. And I mentioned it to my husband um, after a little while. I was like, yeah, it's been, like, shaking my bed. And he was like, because we, um, we have separate beds, but they're right up next to each other. Because mm-hmm. I, I toss and turn and, you know, a lot in my sleep, and I'll wake him up. So we sleep in the same room, but in different beds. And he was like, you know what? I've been noticing my bed's been shaking, but I just thought you were doing it. And oh, I was wow. like, no, no, that's not me. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I guess, I guess, I feel like it's like trying to like wake us up to be like, come look, there's something else weird that I've done. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm too tired. I don't want to do that. Yeah. Hey, come play. <laughs> like, no, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> Turning on the burners you know that would kind of concern me i'm I'm assuming that only happened once just the one time yeah that that part is like let's not do that but uh the rest of the stuff seems you know relatively harmless yeah and like it doesn't it doesn't really scare me like with some of the stuff that i've seen like this is the most mild thing that i've ever experienced like and i even I, i'll use it to like calm myself down like you know i'll have been listening to something scary and i'll go to the bathroom in the middle of the night it's all dark and i'll start hot footing it around like oh god what's happening and i'll like calm myself down with the only thing in your apartment is your poltergeist and your friends so you're not scared of that so it's this weird kind of relationship with a a ghost (laughs) that i use to calm myself down about other ghosts with i don't know it's it's very strange well you know if it ever does start communicating ask the poltergeist what that weird dude is because (laughs) <laughs> Maybe yeah. <it> <laughs> <laughs> like, were you around two years ago? Did you see some guy with a gross mustache come into my room? <laughs> you see him again. Don't let him in the room. <laughs> if you can. You ask him what his deal is, so I don't have to. <laughs> you ask him, and you let me know because I'm probably not going to be able to. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, Heather, thank you so much for your stories. Thank Joel for saying his part, and uh, we'll oh. schedule another time. We'll get some of these uh, stories of other ghosts you said you have. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for listening, everybody. We will be back next week with more Strange Familiars. Remember, you can always find us at strangefamiliars.com. All of that contact information goes to me. Strange Familiars is a production of Dark Holler Arts. Music, books, art, podcasts, and more. Darkhollerarts.com. Intro and background music is by Stone Breath. Go to stonebreath.bandcamp.com for more. We are on Facebook, facebook.com slash strangefamiliars, where you can also join the Strange Familiars Gathering Group, and we are on Instagram, at Strange Familiars.
appear at the end of time Oh, 
mother rust, for still your heart does shine.